What's up everyone? Today we're going to discuss some Knicks basketball strategy. According to Coach Tibbs, the Knicks might play Julius Randle at center for 10-15 to 15 minutes a game this upcoming season because of the offensive advantages this could bring to the team. So it looks like the Knicks will run some lineups where they play small, at least during certain portions of the games. Small ball lineups could prove to be a deadly option for the Knicks, potentially giving them a death lineup. For those who don't know, the term death lineup originates with the Golden State Warriors who at times will put out a small lineup that would blitz teams due to the incredible offensive firepower on the floor and the defensive versatility. They didn't play these lineups all that often, but when they did, the Warriors would run teams off the floor. The Knicks could have their own version of the death lineup, but who would be the five players in the lineup? I would imagine that the Knicks death lineup would probably be Jalen Brunson, Dante DiVincenzo, Mikhail Bridges, OG Ananobi, and Julius Randle. So what exactly are the offensive and defensive advantages of the Knicks death lineup? Let's talk about it. But first, we have to discuss BetUS. Guys, if you love basketball and you're a knowledgeable fan, then you have to join BetUS. With the NBA season still a month away, you can make predictions on what you think will happen and bet on them. The Knicks are a virtual lock to have another winning season in my opinion, so I'm going to bet they make the playoffs. If you sign up, use the code YouTube150 and receive a 150% sign up bonus of up to $2,000. Now back to the death lineup. What are the offensive advantages? The first advantage is the improved shooting the Knicks would have on the floor. By putting Dante in the death lineup, the shooting on the floor would be so much better. Dante drained 40% of his threes last season and made in the third most three-pointers in the league last year behind Steph and Luka. And between Jalen, Dante, OG, and Macau, the Knicks would now have four shooters on the floor that hit over 37% of their threes last season, giving them much better spacing. The Knicks have two incredible drivers between Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle. Both of these guys get in the paint a lot, finish at a high level, and draw a ton of fouls with no non-shooting big man clocking the lane and great shooters all over the floor, this would make it even easier for Jalen and Julius to get to the basket and wreak havoc. With this type of spacing, teams will be forced to pick their poison when Jalen or Julius drive. Defenses will have no choice but to give up an open layup at the rim or provide help defense and give up an open three to a high quality shooter. Julius at center could present some serious problems for opposing teams defensively. If he could rediscover his touch from the outside from a year ago, back when he shot 34% from deep, then this would pull opposing rim protectors away from the basket. With Julius stretching the defense with his shooting, this would allow his teammates to score on their drives a lot easier since they would have way more uncontested layups without a shot blocker in the paint. Julius would also have a huge speed advantage against opposing centers, which he could exploit by taking them off the dribble and getting to the basket. And not only is Julius a really strong finisher at the rim, but he's also become a pretty good playmaker. So I could see Julius racking up assists from finding open shooters after drawing multiple defenders into the paint. It's also worth noting that while OG, Mikel, and Dante aren't necessarily elite drivers, they're all capable of making plays off the dribble and getting to the basket. Having five players on the floor that can shoot, pass, and dribble at a high level would be an absolute nightmare for teams to have to defend. This lineup could bring the Knicks offense to new heights. But how will this small ball lineup hold up on the other end of the court? I'm sure some of you could see this lineup having defensive issues. With no shot blocker, the Knicks would be lacking a strong defensive paint presence, but I think this lineup could offset their lack of a rim protector with their excellent perimeter defense. Between Dante DiVincenzo, OG Ananobi, and Mikhail Bridges, the Knicks would have three excellent on-ball defenders on the floor for them. All three of these guys are great at keeping their man in front and contesting their shots. They're also versatile defenders that can guard multiple positions, so it wouldn't matter that the Knicks don't have a shot blocker in the paint if the opponent can't even get there. And if a player does get blown by, Julius Randle will be the last line of defense and it'll be up to him to step up. Julius has never been a rim protector, but he has shown that he can make defensive plays near the rim. If Julius could be more engaged on defense this season, he could provide at least some resistance when players get blown by on the perimeter. OG Ananobi has also shown that he can step up and provide help defense when needed. A big concern when playing small lineups is always on the glass, 
but I think this death lineup would rebound just fine. Julius Randle has always been a monster rebounder, which is why he's a double-double machine. And Oji Ananobi and Mikhail Bridges are good rebounders the Knicks would have in their front court. The Knicks' death lineup may be small, but these guys are scrappy enough to not get bullied on the glass. Overall, the Knicks' death lineup could prove to be the most dangerous five-man unit they put out on the floor, but I don't see Tibbs playing this lineup for long stretches. The Knicks will most likely go with the big lineups the majority of the time. Guys like Mitchell Robinson and Precious Ashua will still get the majority of the center minutes, but I think Tibbs will test out the small ball lineups over short stretches to see how they perform and what type of chemistry the players can develop. A small lineup like this could be really taxing on the players, especially on Julius who would need to box out and defend centers. The NBA regular season is a marathon, not a sprint, so it's important that Tibbs doesn't run his players into the ground. The playoffs is likely where we would see the death lineup play much heavier minutes. And not only does this five-man unit give the Knicks a dominant lineup, but it also makes them more adaptable, which is crucial in the postseason. Let's say the Knicks have a playoff series against a team like the Cleveland Cavaliers, who still plays with two big men on the floor. Then it would make more sense for the Knicks to stick with their traditional lineup. But then let's say the Knicks have to play a team like the Celtics that embraces small ball. Then this could be the perfect time to roll out the death lineup to match up with the other team's offensive firepower. The NBA playoffs are often like a chess match. A big part of winning a series is having the ability to make adjustments when needed and the Knicks having the death lineup in their back pocket makes them more dangerous and increases their chances of going on a deep run and winning the championship. But now I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of the Knicks potentially running small lineups with Julius Randle at the 5? Let me see your thoughts down below in the comment section. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing rest of your day. And I'll catch you guys next video.